Hi, my name is William Basbury and I'm a chef instructor here at the Community College of Philadelphia. And today I want to introduce you to pizza, pizza dough, and some of the things you can do with it to enjoy with your family. Most folks, they have a favorite pizzeria that they go to. And one thing you'll notice about it, they either have a great crust, but the toppings are all usual. Or they have great toppings, but the crust is so-so. How can you find a place, you know, if it's in your neighborhood or in your area, you want to find a place where it has great crust and great toppings. Today, I'm going to show you how you can make some things at home, great crust and great toppings. Okay, so what I'm going to start out first, I'm going to show you to make a pizza dough. And with that dough, we're going to make a round pizza. We're going to make a stromboli. We're going to make a calzone. And I'm going to show you how to make another dough to make a Chicago style stuffed pizza. So let's get going and I'll show you how to do it. For the pizza dough, um, this particular recipe is done by weight. So what I'm going to do is I got my digital scale. I'm going to use that and I'm going to start measuring out the ingredients and then I'm going to put it in our mixing bowl here with the dough hook and we're going to get it going. And once I get it all put together, I'm going to be able to put it into my proof box and if you're home, it probably takes you like an hour, hour and 20 minutes to get uh, the dough proofed, but in my case, it'll take like maybe 20 minutes because the proof box is set up to like 90, 95 degrees and there's a little moisture in there, it makes it humid. If you have a gas oven, the pilot light usually keeps your oven about 90, 95 degrees, perfect if you want to put dough or anything, not only for pizza, but any kind of baked goods, you can put it in the oven and it's, it's a proof box at home. So let's get going. So first thing I do is turn on my scale. All right, and I'm going to take my mixing bowl that goes with my mixer. All right, and the first thing I want to do is I want to Z it out. So now everything I start and measure and put in the bowl, it's going to be proper and precise. So now what I want to get is 28 ounces of flour. I'm using all-purpose flour. Now you could use bread flour. It's a little thicker. I want to use all-purpose because it's going to be a little bit more tender. So. Once again, I'm going to measure out 28 ounces. If you're using a digital scale, it is going to be one pound, 12 ounces, 111. If I hit it on the head, let's see. There we go. One pound, 12 ounces, that's 28 ounces. Now. I'm going to use some yeast. I'm going to use two tablespoons of yeast. So I'm going to get my measuring spoons. And once again, it's going to go in the same batch. Here's one. Here's two. Okay. Now to that, I want to add some salt. So here you have a choice. You can use regular salt. But if you want more flavor, and I do, I'm going to use garlic salt instead. Not only is going to have the salt is going to um, concentrate the flavor, but with the garlic, it's going to give it a nice taste to the crust. So here we go. That's one. That's two tablespoons of garlic salt. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to put in some olive oil, but the last thing is, uh, let's see, I had some garlic. I'm going to add another teaspoon of granulated garlic because I want the flavor. So here it is. Now, here is my olive oil, and I have my tablespoon. But before that, this is what I want to do. It's real important. You could put everything in, but in my case, what I want to do, here's a dough hook. All right, we're going to attach that. All right, now, I'm going to put it on low speed. What I want to do is I want to mix up all the dry ingredients. If I don't, who knows, maybe if my recipe doesn't come out perfectly, uh, if it doesn't rise properly, it's because the, the yeast didn't mix in. 
uh, the salt and other flavoring agents, they didn't get mixed in properly and you're not gonna get a good product. So what I'm doing here is mixing that. Okay, now I'm gonna put in my olive oil. Here's one, two, three, four tablespoons. All right, now that's gonna mix up for me and shut my scale off. All right, and in about two minutes, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I also have a spatula, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape down the sides. The last thing to go in is water. Now, the recipe calls for 12 ounces of water. However, sometimes you might need a little less, sometimes you need a little bit more, this is where you have to fine tune it, and you know this, you, you do this by experience. So here, I have my water. I'm gonna measure out 12 ounces. Let's see. Here we go. Now the water, usually tap water, if you can get it about 90, 95 degrees, you're gonna jump start the yeast. That's what you want. Uh, yeast dies at 140 degrees, so you don't want to use water that's going to be close to 140. 90 to 95 is perfect with the water, okay? So now it's looking like cornmeal. So what I'm going to do is scrape the sides, all right? Start it again. Now I'm gonna add, now I'm gonna add my water. Okay? Little bit at a time, and it's gonna start to form a dough for me. There we go. That's 12 ounces of water. So now the trick is it doesn't take like 30 seconds, it takes a while. You have to let the machine and the dough hook work, and it's gonna start to form a dough for you. Okay? Let's see. All right, it's starting to form for me. So it looks like I'm probably gonna need a little bit more water. So I'll just say like maybe another ounce or two. Okay, now we're gonna let that mix. And it takes a while. At this point, if I need a little bit more water, maybe a tablespoon, too. If I've put too much water in, I want to fine tune it. So what I'm going to do is I can take some flour, a tablespoon or two, and I can just put it right in. Now, what do you want the dough to do? You want a big dough ball. And if you can see my, if you can see my mixing ball, there's nothing on the sides. And that is what you want when you're formulating the dough. You don't want it to stick to the sides. You want to have it nice and clean, and the only thing you're gonna see is a nice dough ball right in the middle, okay? And I do need a little bit more water, so I'll just put some in, but we're getting there. Let's see, that should do the trick, and then I'll show you, beautiful. Now, while that's going, what I can do is I can start, uh, I'm going to start making a, um, one of the things I'm going to do for you today is the Chicago style stuffed pizza. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it together, everything you need for that particular dough while the regular pizza dough is mixing. Now, the dough that I have here, let me put just a tad more water in. Perfect. Okay. That particular dough for the pizza is by weight. Now what I'm gonna do for the stuffed pizza recipe, it's done by volume. So many cups of flour, so many tablespoons, teaspoons, maybe one egg, and that's by volume. If you wanna get great results, I suggest you do it by weight. Anytime you can get a recipe that has weight, that's what you want. Uh, if you go by volume, you have to think about this. When they grow the wheat to make the flour, 
Not all the batches of wheat are the same. Some might be drier than others, which means you're gonna to have to put more water into your recipe. Or if it's too wet, let's say it was a rainy uh, growing season, then you're gonna to have to cut back on the water that goes in. It's real important. But by experience, once you make enough baked products, you'll know how to fine tune it. And that's real, real important. Oh, perfect. Okay, so our dough is working very well. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna put that together. The first thing we're gonna do is we have to put in three cups of all-purpose flour. That's two. Three, okay? I'll leave this on the side. Now, we need a quarter cup of cornmeal, which I happen to have right here. This particular recipe calls for it. Here's a quarter cup of cornmeal. Now, we're gonna put in my yeast. I'm gonna put in a teaspoon. When I first tried this recipe, I didn't think there was enough yeast, so I put in a tablespoon and a half. Big mistake on my part. The recipe called for one teaspoon, guess what? That's what I, the second time I made it, that's what I used. So here, that's one teaspoon. Now, I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of olive oil, but for salt, once again, I could use regular salt, no. I'm gonna go with the garlic salt, because I wanna have flavor in my dough. So in this case here, it's gonna be one and a half teaspoons. There's a one. There's the half, garlic salt, all right? The last thing, okay, this is all set to go. All right, and I'm gonna show you something, I'm gonna stop this, okay? Now, normally what you would do is you let this keep on going and kneading, okay? I made a batch earlier, so I'm gonna show you. This is what it looks like when you first go into proof box, okay? And here's what it's looked like after it's proofing. Quite a difference. You're gonna see this particular dough, it's lighter and it's nice and soft. It takes a while for the gluten network to relax and that's why when the dough goes into a proofer, it's hard. As the gluten networks relax, okay, you're gonna get a nice soft dough and this dough is gonna be for my round pizza my Stromboli and my two calzones. So I can put this back in the proof box. Normally at home, what you would do, okay, you have the dough, it has been, the dough itself has been kneading with the dough hook. So what I usually do, I'm gonna spray a bowl. I can take the dough, okay, as you can see, Look at how clean that bowl is. That's just what you want, nothing on the sides. So it's perfect. It's a little hard, but it's okay. Because number one, as it, as it proofs, it's gonna relax for me, and that's what I want. I'm gonna spray the top a little bit so it doesn't dry out. Now this is gonna go in a proof box. That being done, now what can I do? Remember when I said you're gonna mix up your dry ingredients? Now we're gonna do this for the stuffed pizza dough. So here we go. Once again, locked in, dough hook. All right. Now, we're gonna let that mix up. All the dry is gonna mix. Then the last thing I have to put in, two tablespoons of olive oil and our water. Then we're gonna let that mix. We're gonna let that proof and then I can start to put some things together. Things that are slow cooked, they can absorb the flavor, and that's what we're trying to do. So now, in this case here, what I wanna do, okay, I'm gonna scrape down the sides. Ooh. Okay, now I'm gonna get my olive oil my two tablespoons with my measuring spoon. There's one. I'm 
Now, the one thing I will say is the olive oil I'm using, it's green. It's true olive oil. It is not extra virgin. Extra virgin is lighter. I want the flavor. So I'm going to use stronger olive oil, and that's what it looks like. It's got a nice green texture. Okay, so that's on the side. So now I'm going to let that mix a bit. Then I'm going to scrape down the sides, put in our water, and we're going to continue to mix the dough. There we go. One thing you want to remember too, anytime you shut the machine off, don't be sticking spatulas or anything in. There's a chance it could get stuck and you don't want to hurt yourself. So here, okay, perfect. So, now it's water, 10 ounces or so. So let's go to eight, a cup, eight ounces. So we're gonna start with that, put that in. I like to put the water in slowly, so this way it absorbs and you can see the dough start coming together. And once again too, if you have a lot of garlic or garlic salt, uh, let's say you're making, you need some thyme or Italian seasoning, you can get that aroma as the dough starts to come together. Oh, it's looking good. Okay. I'm going to speed it up a bit. It looks like I'm not, I don't have to use any more water. So that's going to take about two, three minutes. It looks pasty, but as it draws in the rest of the dry ingredients, it's going to make a nice dough for me. Okay, and I'm going to show you what that looks like in about three minutes, and I'll show you what it looks like when I put it in a proof box as well. Now, let me just scrape the sides down. Perfect. That's going to take a little, this dough is going to take a little while, but in the long run it's going to be worth it because it's going to have good flavor. And we need a little bit, tad more water. It takes a while, but then again, too, once you get it, it's perfect. It takes a while, and you have to fine-tune it. All right. Okay. Once again, here's the dough. As you can see, the sides are clean. It has to proof. This is what it looks like after it's kneaded and before you put it in the proof box. Here's what the dough looks like after it's proofed. As you can see, did it double in size? No, I'd say that probably more like three or four times in size, but that's what you want. Now, when you go to push down and I can formulate the dough, it's going to be perfect. This dough right here, if you could feel it, it's kind of thick, okay? And what you want is the dough to be nice and tender for you. The gluten network that is in the dough itself and in the flour has to relax. As it relaxes, you get a nice smooth dough. Okay, so in this case here, I am gonna spray a pan. I'm gonna put the dough in, and as you can see, once again, it's perfect. That's just what you want. So I had the right amount, I had to adjust the water. I didn't have to put in any dry, more dry ingredients. Here we go. So now this I'm gonna put in a proof box. So that's all the dough we have to make. Because with the pizza dough, I'm gonna be able to make a round pizza, a stromboli, and calzones, okay? Now the other thing I wanna show you, uh, another item, I didn't make the dough, but this is something you could do at home. French bread pizza. When I worked a uh, country club up in New Hampshire, we used to do this on men's league. Every Tuesday night, we would make French bread pizzas. And basically, all you need is a baguette. Okay, let me get my handy dandy serrated knife blade. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this in half. 
okay? I'm gonna cut the halves in half, and it's real important. You see, once you make, I'm gonna set this up, I'll be able to bake it later, but when you're making French bread pizza, you know, if I were to put sauce and cheese on this the way it is, you get and I put it in the oven, you get a mouthful of mush. So what you want to do is you want to have the crunch factor come into play. So you want to turn around, you want to brown this bread. Now, when I first did it at 400 degrees, I did it 11 minutes too much. So seven minutes and it'll be perfect. Okay, it'll have the right amount of crunch factor. This is real easy. Now, I'm using my homemade sauce. However, go down to the store, get your favorite jar brand sauce. You can go get some shredded cheese over in the dairy department and you can put it together that way and then I'll show you what else we can actually do. Let me get a, I'm using a sheet pan, half a sheet pan I should say. Okay, so now I'm going to start this in the oven. Okay, I'm going to put it in for seven minutes. As you can see, it's nice and white. In seven minutes, it's going to have a little color to it and it's going to have a crunch factor and that's what you want. Then, when I go to put the sauce and the cheese, I could put Italian seasoning, a few other items on it. That's what it's going to give extra flavor. So, in the oven we go. And I'm going to set the timer, seven minutes. If I was working in a pizzeria, as you can see behind me, all I'd have to do is get a pizza paddle, put the dough right on the oven floor. But home, you wouldn't do that because you have a grate. So I would suggest you want to use a pizza pan. Okay? And that being the case, when you use this, one of the things you want to do, okay, with my little bit of olive oil, okay, I don't need a lot, but I want to brush the pan. So this way, I'm going to show you when it's done, when the pizza gets done, it's going to be nice and golden on the bottom. And that's what you want. It's not going to be raw. Okay? And once again, I don't need a lot of olive oil, just enough to coat the bottom. Okay? Now, when you measure out the dough, okay, in my case, what I did, I weighed it, 20 ounces was perfect when I put it in this pan. See, once again, here's my pizza dough, okay, as you can see it, oh, it's perfect. It's nice, it's moist, it's stretchy. So what I'm going to do, I want to get 20 ounces, eight. 15, let's see, there we go, perfect. Okay, so now what I can do, all right, that's dough plus the other dough I have, I'll be able to make calzones and I'll be able to make stromboli. So now what I can do is take some flour, put it down, okay, now, as you can see, the dough itself is nice, pliable. That's what I want. My notes, put them over here. Okay. Now, what you want to do is you want to get the dough itself round. Then, since you can do this at home, get yourself a rolling pin. You're going to roll it out to start it out. Okay. And you'll see the dough itself, the more you roll it out, Okay, now if it starts to stick, just put a little flour on the top and it won't stick to the rolling pin. As you can see, it's rolling out very nice. So it's warm. It is going to be warm. Okay, take my pizza pan. All right, now. I can stretch this, so basically, here it goes. It's in my pan, and I can work this. All right. I can work it out and slowly stretch it, and I can fill out the bottom of this pan. 
Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to take, I want to brush a little olive oil on the edge for crispness, okay? So this way it's going to give me some color and it's also going to be nice and crisp, okay? So now that's ready. Now we're ready for our sauce, okay? Now this sauce, uh, I made it and basically what I got was a good can of all-purpose tomatoes, olive oil, minced garlic. I cooked this for about two hours and all I did was let it simmer. I finished it off with a little sugar and if I wanted to, I could put in a little Marsala wine. It gives a little bit more body and flavor to it. Now my sauce is usually on, I would say, a little towards the sweet side because the cheese that I use is usually savory, sweet, savory, and it gets a nice blend. And that's what I try and accomplish. So here we have the sauce, okay? Now, when you go to put sauce on a pizza, okay, I usually start in the middle, and all you wanna do is you know, work your way out to the sides. All right, here we go. Now, as you can see, remember, I had the, uh, the olive oil, which is good, all right? So that's going to have a nice golden finish, and what I'm going to have on the inside is going to be red, and then when I'm going to put a blend of cheese, I have mozzarella uh, with some uh, parmesan and some provolone. Okay, here we go. All right, I want to take it. One of the things I like is... I don't like a lot of crust on my pizza. I like to have the flavoring agent go right to the end. So as you can see, here we go. All right, now, my cheese, okay? This is uh, shredded mozzarella and provolone. So now I'm gonna spread it on my pizza, okay? Now, the other thing I can do if I want, if I want to put a little bit more flavor to it, I could get some Italian seasoning, okay, just a tad for color, and I can just put this on the top. Up. Here we go. I'm going to check that in about one minute. So I have some Italian seasoning, and guess what? I want to put a little bit more flavor so I'm going to use some granulated garlic. I'm going to put that on top of my pizza as well. I'm going to put this in the bottom oven for now just to hold it. Okay, and then when the time is right, I'm going to fire it up. Now, with my bread that I have toasted, I want to show you what that looks like. Okay. As you can see, that's seven minutes. It's perfect. It has nice color. It's not too crunchy where it's gonna fall apart. So basically now what I can do is I can turn around and I can, uh, I'm gonna let this cool a bit. Then I'm gonna sauce it up, cheese it up. I can do the same thing. I can put in some granulated uh, garlic if I like, plus some Italian seasoning and voila, then we put it back in the oven. For how long? Oh, maybe about another five to seven minutes. And all you want to do is you want to heat up the sauce and the cheese. So I'm going to put this on the side for now. Okay, now, the next thing I want to show you, okay, is a stromboli. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some dough, all right, and I'm going to roll it once again, I'm going to roll the dough out. Let me have some flour in. Okay, I want to make a rectangle. This dough is very, very soft, which is good. Don't be afraid to put flour on it. If it starts to stick, it'll be perfect. All right, now, once again, we're going right, we're going left. Here we go. Now, we want that rectangle. OK. 
Okay, as you can see, just what we want. It's nice and thin, and that's what you want when we roll it up. Okay, Stromboli's are not thick, they're thin. So, in this particular case, what I wanted to do was I have my Italian dressing, and what I'm gonna do is I wanna, I wanna mix it up. As you can see, I have red wine vinegar, I put in some olive oil, Italian seasoning, uh, I also put in some salt, some garlic salt, and it was just a little too harsh, so I put in a table, excuse me, a teaspoon or two of sugar, just to sweeten it up a bit. Now, as you can see, it's separated. I'm gonna stir it up. Okay, now I'm gonna put some on the dough itself with my spoon. All righty, now. This is gonna give it, now I, if I wanted to, I could use uh, tomato sauce instead, but I opted to use this. I think the flavor is gonna go better with the cheese, the peppers, and the onions that are gonna put into it. So let's put this on the side. Let me put my sauce over here. Okay, now, what I have is for the cheese, I have some mozzarella cheese that's sliced. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna put the cheese on it. And this is great, it's nice, it's thin. And I'm gonna build this. So I'm gonna just put the cheese right away, right on top. Now, another trick, don't leave the cheese in a refrigerator. Take it out and let it get up to room temperature this way. It's not gonna fall apart on you and it's easier to peel. It's easier to put on the dough. Okay, so I'm gonna put cheese down. There we go. All right, now what's next? How about some salami? It's the same way it's room temperature, number one. And number two, it's nice, it's sliced thin. I'm gonna put that down here. So we're gonna build a nice stromboli. It's gonna have the flavor of the Italian dressing. All right, we got this. I think what I wanna put on there is some onions. Okay, we'll put some onion in. Now, with the onions, I pre-cooked them because if you put raw onions on, there's a good chance they probably are gonna stay crunchy and they're gonna stay raw. You don't want that. So what I did was I sauteed the onions in some olive oil and I put a little garlic salt on top of it. So it's gonna put into our, that'll be in our mix, okay? Now, what else? How about some peppers? Okay, we can put these peppers in. Now the peppers itself, they should cook without a problem. I've sliced them thin, but let's just make sure. So let me put a little bit more dressing on the top. Here we go. And what are we missing? How about some cheese? So I got two types of cheese. I'm gonna put a little Parmesan cheese, okay? And I'm gonna chase that with some regular mozzarella. All right, as you can see, that's quite the, that's quite the concoction. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna roll it up and I'm gonna put it on the sheet pan, which is right here. And once again, what I wanna do first is I wanna take a little olive oil Okay, and just grease the pan lightly. Okay, and this way it shouldn't stick. Now, when I roll this up, as you can see, here we go. It's gonna cook. It should be perfect. All right, let's see. Now, if the, if the 
filling rolls out a bit, that's okay, because number one, you want it to be nice and moist, all right? And when we put this in the oven, if you put the seam side down, like so, all right? Now, the last thing I wanna do is I could take, once again, a little olive oil on the top. I'm gonna put this back in the proof box because I want it to seal a little bit. And I have some garlic salt for flavor. And I also have some Italian seasoning. So because I brushed it with the olive oil, I could put this on top as well. All right, I'm gonna let it go back in and proof a bit more, it's gonna seal. I've tucked in the ends and then we fire it up. So that's gonna go back in here. All righty, now. Our French bread is cooled down enough, so what I can do now is I'm gonna dress it. I'm gonna put some sauce, cheese, and then I'll get that set for the oven as well. Here we go. As you can see with the color, it came out perfect. It's not too crunchy, not too soft, and that's just what you want. So here, you can do this at home for your family. Just go down to your local market and just get a baguette, or you can get a big you know, loaf of Italian bread and like I said, if you don't make your own sauce, you can use a jar sauce store brand or whatever brand you so choose, okay? All right, now. Okay, so now we have our sauce, cheese, okay. Now, if you wanted to, let's say, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna do this too. I'm gonna to put some cheese on all four of them, but with two, I'm gonna put some, uh, some pepperoni on it, okay? So now, with the cheese, we're gonna take it, there we go. Okay, that's going to be set for the oven. And now, okay, tell you what I'm going to do. I have some sliced salami, so I'm going to put the salami on one. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to put some sliced pepperoni on the other one. And then we're going to have this ready for the oven. Yeah. All right, now that's ready for the oven. Okay, so we have our French bread pizza. We have our round pizza. We have our calzone. Oh, excuse me, we have our stromboli. Now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make a calzone. We're gonna put that together. I think I can get two out of this, perfect. But I just want to make sure everything that's the same bakes the same. So you want the same size. You don't want one bigger than the other. Okay, seven ounces. Seven ounces. I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket tonight. Now, what are the odds of me having it right on the head like that? So, so what I can do is once again, I want to take a little flour. Round, and I'm gonna roll it out. This is real easy to do this at home as well. So if it's not completely round, at least you can still 
will fold it in half. Okay? Now, yeah. voila. So now what I can do is once again, I can take a little filling. All right, I'm going to put a little Italian dressing on it. Now the other thing I want to do as well is I have some egg wash and when I seal this up I could crimp it down but I want to make sure that it's going to stay you know sealed for me so I'm going to just go around the sides okay and I know when I put this together it'll be perfect so now what do we put on here how about some pepperoni okay we'll put that in how about some onions? All right. Now, with the cheese, what I could do is I could put in the sliced or I could put in the shredded. I'm going to go sliced. I think I'm going to get a better fix. There we go. What else could I put in? As you can see, that's a nice, that's a nice calzone. So now what you do is you fold it over, okay? And what you have is like half moon or a pocket. Let me grease the pan. Now in the case of the calzone, I'm going to put one here. This has meat in it, okay? I'm going to egg wash it because I want to give it a little color. Uh, but before I egg wash, I'm going to make another calzone. I'm going to put some more veggies and cheese in this. I'll tell you what we're going to do. A little olive oil, okay? I'm going to use my egg wash on the side when I seal it. Now, let's put a little garlic salt into it for flavor. All right, how about a little Italian seasoning? Now, how about some peppers? How about some pepperoni? Chase that with some onions. What are we missing? How about some cheese? So, uh, because I have it sliced and I know it's going to coat very well, I'm going to use the sliced and I'm going to put that right on the top. There we go. So now we have our second calzone. Let's wrap that up. As you can see, we're going to seal it. Okay. Now, all right, beautiful. Now, with the calzone itself, here's something I want to do. I'm going to egg wash both of them for color. And I don't want them to explode. So what I'm going to do is I want to get my knife. I'm going to slash the top. Okay. And basically this is going to let the steam out. So this way it's going to cook for me, but it's not going to turn around and blow up. Okay. Here we go. So now the last thing that I'm going to work on is going to be to put together the, um, the stuffed pizza. So now we have our calzones. I'm going to put this back in the proof box. That's going well. There we go. Now, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you're going, to, you're going to work on. As you can see, here's the dough. Oh, man. It's nice. It's firm. 
Just what I want. It smells great. All right, so now, now, I want to have the dough. What I want to do is I want to divide this in half, okay? Half for the top, and the other half is going to be on the bottom. So, let's see, three, two, one. What I do, let's weigh the dough, see how much it is. One pound, 11 ounces, 12, let's call it 28 ounces. So that being the case, what I want, let's go 14 and 14, 12, all right, perfect, 14 it is. So now what I want to do is I want to get a round shape. Mm -hmm. As you can see, this dough is very nice and pliable, nice and soft. Now, uh -huh. perfect. You get it as round as you possibly can. Now, this is a spring form pan, okay? And the one thing that is great about it, I'm going to show you. All right. I can bake something in this. And when I take the spring form out, whatever I baked is going to stay on the piece of glass. This is tempered glass, OK? And that's what I want. So now I don't have to turn around and lubricate this or spray the pan at all. So basically, what I'm going to do for the filling for this, all right, as you can see, what I want to do is I want to put it in here, and I want to have a crust on the side. So, all right, making a nice crust. And what's going to happen is I'm going to make a filling to put in, and that's the pie part. This is going to top it off. Okay, there you go. So that's what it looks like when you put the bottom in. Now to this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a stuffing for it. Okay, so this is going to be our top. So now in order to make the stuffing, what I want to do is I have to get my mixing bowl. I can use this. All right, and what I have for the filling itself, um, uh, I'm going to have some Parmesan cheese. I want to put that in. Okay. I'm going to put in some ricotta cheese. Let me get my spoon. Okay, make a nice mix. That's uh, about a half a cup of ricotta. It's going to go in. I want to put in some mushrooms. There we go. Now, the mushrooms are raw, but it's OK because they're going to cook with everything else. So we got mushrooms in. Now, now let's say, how about some onions? OK, and once again, the onions are already cooked. All right, let's see, we got onions. We got the pepperoni, okay, ricotta cheese. We got some garlic that's in there, but we put a little bit more granulated garlic for flavor. All right, how about some peppers? Sure. Some peppers. All right, load that in for color. Okay, as you can see, right then and there, now we're going to mix it up. Now, what I am going to do is I'm also going to put in some mozzarella cheese, more cheese, and just to give it a little bit more moisture, a tad more sauce. There we go. Now we mix it up. Uh, 
Now, once I put this in and I put the top on it, okay, here we go. Perfect. I want to put a little garlic salt into it for flavor. Okay. A little granulated garlic. Now, this is the bottom half, or this is the filling itself. So, before I do that, it's time. I'm going to start putting things in the oven. So, 400 degrees. Let's take our pizza, all right, our round pizza, and let's give that, in this case, we'll give it 20 minutes. We'll give it 18 minutes and we'll take a look. That's going. Now, I'm going to take my French bread pizzas. I'm going to put that in, middle oven. All right. And I'm also going to take my calzone and my, that's a stromboli, get the calzones out. Okay, put them in. Now, I'm going to set the timer seven minutes because I know the French bread pizza will be ready in seven minutes. And then with the other two, what I'll do with the stromboli and the calzone, I'll be able to reset the timer. So now, once again, here's what it looks like with the dough. So now, put everything in. Now, right now, it doesn't, it doesn't look that appetizing, but trust me, by the time it all cooks and blends together, it's going to be perfect. Okay? Because remember, too, we're going to put sauce on the top. So here, okay, we have the cheeses, the onions. There's no meat in this. We have veggies, then we have cheese. Okay? Now, what's the last thing needed to do? It's easy. Just put the top on. So here, Now, in this case, we can have a little extra crust to it. All right. So once again, if I wanted to make it round, I could just play with it a bit. If you're making this at home, what you can do is just go around the edges, stretch the edges, and you'll get something that'll fit right in, okay? Now, okay? We're going to put this on the top. Okay, here we go. Oh boy, look at that. Two things. Number one, I'm going to get my knife and I want to just slit the middle and this way any steam will come right out. Now I can take some sauce all right, I'm going to put it right on the top, and we're going to go right in the oven with this. Okay, so here we go. This is going into the oven as well. We're going to go top side, all right? And we got 14 minutes to go on a regular pizza. Uh, we got four minutes to go on our French bread pizza, and then we're going to reset it for the calzone and the stromboli. Hey, we're back. And now I started pulling things out of the oven. Once again, here's our pizza round. Here's our stromboli, two calzones, and remember the French bread pizza, salami on one, pepperoni on the other, and two with cheese. And I was just sauce, cheese, and put a topping on it. But if you're home, you can actually use a chef's knife or you can use, this is called the pizza rocker. And what you want to do is I can rock and I can go right through and I can cut the pizza, okay? So, eight slices. 
All right. So here we go. So as you can see, bingo. That's eight slices of a pie. All right, now let's look at our stromboli. For that, I'm going to use a chef's knife. Now, normally what you want to do, I'm just going to cut this in half to show you what the inside looks like. All right. OK. And if I hold it up, as you can see, look at that. We got the onions. We got the peppers. We got the cheese. We got everything. And remember, I put a little Italian dressing on it. Now, what can you do with this? I'm going to cut this once again so I can get, if I wanted to, four nice pieces. Okay? So once again, that's our stromboli. Now, let's go over here, all right, to our calzone. Now, once again, you can see the color. And if you look on the bottom, look at that nice gold color. That's what you're looking for. How did I get that? Remember, I brushed a little olive oil on the pan itself, and that's important. So in this case, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to cut this in half, and you can see what it looks like, OK? That was the meat and the cheese. All right, you can see. Now, the dough is not supposed to be super, super hard. It's going to be nice, soft, and chewy for you. So that's one calzone. All right, now this one, I believe I just put the, this didn't have any meat in it. See how easy? It cuts real easy. Okay, vegetables, as you can see, once again. And we have, you know, on the bottom, look at that nice gold color. All right. Then it's our second calzone, okay? As you can see, it's got nice crunch. It's going to have good flavor, all right? This one is the pepperoni, all right? And this one was the salami. So as you can see, we got the pepperoni. We have the salami, stromboli, calzones, pizza. Now I'm going to unpan that, and I'll show you what that looks like. Look at the side. See how it is? It came together. So now what I can do, let's see here. I'm going to get it off the glass that it's on, and I can just take it. Look at this. It comes right off, OK? Now the glass is very hot, but like I said, it's tempered. And that's what you want with the spring form pan. That goes on the side. All right, so what's left? Once again, chef's knife, and we're going to cut a slice. So in this case here, OK, the longer you let it set, uh, it will firm up. You don't want to get it right out of the oven, because if you do that, it might leak on you. So what you want to do is you want to just get it to the point where you slice it, like I did here. Now, OK, now, all right. It still, it still has to firm up a bit. But as you can see, to put that on a plate, it's perfect. Let me show you this side of it. You see, it has to firm up a bit more, OK? but. It's still a pie with the pizza on the top. So once again, pizza round, calzones, stromboli, French bread pizza, and our stuffed Chicago pizza. Okay? You have been watching The Chef's Cook on CCP TV, the educational channel here at the Community College of Philadelphia. And that's how we cook. So until next time, manja and have a great day.